Good evening, everyone, or good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Thank you so much for joining us. It looks like you're all signing in from around the world, which is really exciting to see such a diverse, geographically, such a geographically diverse audience tonight. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, we are going to center tonight's conversation on one part of the college admission process. It's not required. But at Hamilton, we value it uh, for both students and for us in the admission office in our application review process, and that is the college interview. At Hamilton, relationships really matter, and one of the best ways to explore your potential fit with Hamilton is through an interview. Um, I'm Nikki Barron, and I'm joined by my colleague, Jack Nivison. Um, we'd also like to welcome three of our senior admission fellows. They recently joined our team and will provide some insight into their own experiences when they were interviewees, um, but also now that they are in the position of being interviewers. Uh, Jack and I will share some tips on how to approach the college admission interview and some of the benefits of doing one. I also wanted to introduce and welcome my colleague, JD Ross, who is actually in the Zoom chat and the Zoom Q&A this evening. Um, JD will be monitoring the Q&A in the chat, so feel free to ask any questions and put those in the Q&A. Um, we'll start with some introductions. As I said, I'm Nikki Barron. I'm an Associate Dean of Admission here at Hamilton. I'm also a Hamilton College alum. I graduated from Hamilton in 2002. I have been doing interviews actually for about 20 years. Um, I began interviewing my senior year at Hamilton when I had the position that Angie, Lindsay, and Victor had. I was one of the senior fellows in my senior year here at Hamilton. Uh, fun fact about me is that when I was a student at Hamilton, one of my favorite activities to do in the winter was to borrow trays from my dining hall and go sledding down the hills here on Hamilton's campus. Uh, I'm uh, Jack Nivison. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm a senior assistant dean of admission here at Hamilton. Uh, I've been doing interviews uh, probably for about eight years or so. Uh, I was in my fifth year at Hamilton, but also I worked at a boarding school for a couple of years and did interviews there. And I was also uh, same as Nikki at my alma mater. I was in Angie, Lindsay, and Victor's role as a senior interviewer. Um, so a fun fact about me is that Everyone on the Zoom knows I'm a big movie fan. I mean, that is a Lion King poster behind me. And uh, I've made it uh, my mission to try and see as many movies as I can. And I just recently saw every Best Picture winner for the Oscars. And my personal favorite of those, actually, I saw the name of it. I think someone zooming in from there is Casablanca. So if you haven't seen Casablanca, you should definitely give it a look. Um, and I think that we're going to have our senior fellows introduce themselves now as well. And we'll start out with Anji. Hello, everybody. My name is Angie, and I'm class of 2022. I'm from the Bronx, and I'm a Hispanic Studies major and Education Studies minor. And some activities on campus that I do, aside from being like a senior admissions fellow, I'm also a Days in the Solo Center student ambassador. I also work at the at State Office Student Activity Center, and I'm also part of La Vanguardia, which is a Latinx um, cultural club on campus. My name is Lindsay Royce. Um, I'm also a senior from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I'm a world politics major and a sociology minor. And on campus, um, I work in the admissions office. I also work for the um, Connects team, which is basically our career center on campus and bringing alumni back and facilitating conversations. Um, I'm also part of the outing club, so I lead hikes and stuff like that on the weekend. Hi everyone, my name is Victor Liu. I'm from Beijing, China, class of 2022. Uh, I'm an anthropology major with a minor in digital arts. On, cam on campus, I work for the missions. I also work for student activities. I'm part of the digital media intern team. And then I'm also involved with the international student organization. Terrific. Um, so again, thank you to all of, all of you for joining us today um, and learning a little bit more about the interview and the college process. Um, we're going to start a little bit with just an overview about the interview process, and I'm going to turn it over to Jack here and see if Jack could describe some of the purposes of an interview and what purpose the interview serves in an admission process. Sure, yeah. I mean, I think that um, an interview, as Nikki said, it's not a required part of the admissions process here at Hamilton, but I think that um, it, we recommend it because it is such a mutually beneficial experience and conversation. You know, at Hamilton, um, you know, typically with interviews, there are a couple different types. There is an evaluative interview where like, you know, the admission officer or senior admission fellow like Angie, Lindsay, or Victor will ask 
the student questions to get to know them a little bit better and then we'll report back and uh, that report will be included in their admission file. There's also informative interviews uh, which are strictly there, like, you know, for the admission officer to be there to ask questions, share a little bit more about the institution, get to know the student a little bit more, but there's no, um, there's nothing that is added to the file afterwards. At Hamilton, actually, they serve both purposes. They are evaluative, uh, so we will be asking you questions, see a little bit more whether you're a good fit for us, but also you can take that time to ask us questions and see whether we are a good fit for you. Uh, like, you know, sometimes that, like, you know, through the admissions process, that may be uh, one of the points where you can have one-on-one -on -one time with someone uh, from Hamilton, whether it's a current student, like our three fellows here, or if it's an admission officer like Nikki and me. And like, you know, in these interviews at Hamilton, we really kind of use them. And I think that you can utilize them the same way is to share interests and possibly fill in gaps in your application. So like, you know, you might talk in your application or might list different activities and clubs, but there's only so much that you can put about them in your application and you can talk a little bit more about them in your interview, or you might see your transcripts and see, okay, they've taken you know, X, Y, and Z for classes, but you can talk about how, what led you to take those classes and what interests really drove, drive like, you know, your college search. Or there might be some things in the interview uh, or in the application or in your college search that don't quite fit into one of these boxes. Like, you know, you don't know if you put it in the essay, you don't know if it's going to come up in a recommendation, but it's something you really want us to know because we take seriously every part of your life and every part um, of the application that you're submitting to us. And so this context is really important. You know, similar to the essay, the interview gives you an opportunity to share your story with us. And in some ways, like, you know, it can paint an even clearer uh, picture of you for us to be able to get to know you a little bit better. They can talk to, you can talk to us about your college search. You can talk to us about your academic interests. You can talk to us about your extracurricular interests. And you can also talk to us about what interests you in Hamilton and come prepared with the types of questions or things you wanna know more about Hamilton and you hope to get out of that interview as well. Terrific. Um, so there are a couple of different types of interviews that you'll find available at colleges and universities. Thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic, many of us are offering virtual interviews. Um, some colleges may also offer in-person interviews. So that would be something to do a little bit of research on depending on the colleges that you're interested in to see what the interview format might be that's available. Some interviews might be conducted by alumni volunteers. These are representatives who are volunteering their time for the admission office who have graduated from those institutions to chat with you about your interest in that place. It also gives you an opportunity to learn more from directly from an alum who just had that four year student experience. Some interviews are conducted by admission officers like Jack or me, um, and some interviews are conducted by our current seniors. Um, and so colleges or universities are going to have different formats of interviews. They're going to have different types of interviewers. Um, but every interview that you do will, regardless of who your interviewer is, that interview will still have the same weight in the admission process, regardless of who your actual interviewer is. Um, some interviews are done before students apply or before the application deadlines. Other colleges will wait to offer interviews until after the application deadline. So the timeline of the interview process would be something else to research about all the colleges where you're possibly considering applying to see what their interview structure is, what their timeline is, and how they conduct interviews. Um, Jack, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the timeline of when and how to schedule an interview? Absolutely. So at Hamilton, like, you know, we're currently offering uh, interviews for seniors. So those of you who are seniors, as Nikki said, um, most of our interviews are virtual. So we are offering virtual interviews Monday through most Saturdays this fall. Um, there are also a limited number of in-person interviews as well on select Saturdays. Um, and those will be taking place outside. Um, and like, you know, for these interviews, you can schedule them at any point. Like Nikki said, you can, if you haven't submitted your application yet, that's totally fine. You can still schedule an interview right now. The interview report, once you, if you decide to apply and we receive that application, that interview will be added to your application. Uh, but you can wait until after you can submit your application and then uh, decide that you want to interview a little bit later on. Seniors are able to interview uh, at Hamilton for their first year application through January of their senior year. I definitely recommend if an interview is something that you want to do, we have a lot of availability throughout the fall right now. So even if it's like, you know, a few weeks off or a, few, or a month or two off, definitely schedule that because uh, as we get closer to the application deadlines and then after the application deadline, it, we, we do get pretty busy with interview requests and there's only so many that we can accommodate. So if you want to make sure you get your interview in, 
by all means, you are welcome to sign up for it at any point. If we have any juniors that are on uh, the Zoom with us today, uh, starting in around February, so uh, towards more the closer to the springtime of your junior year, you can start to schedule your interviews. Uh, and we will offer interviews throughout the summer as well for any rising seniors. And then obviously the cycle starts over again, kind of once you get into your senior year as well. So regardless, like you know, as Nikki said, before or after or while you're applying, like you know, you're welcome to schedule an interview at any time as a senior right now. Terrific. So we do have some interview tips to share with all of you. And I'm actually going to share my screen um, so that you can see these. Great. Um, so you can also find more information about these tips on our website. But Jack, would you like to start with talking about the first one? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as uh, everyone on this Zoom who's conducted interviews will tell you here at Hamilton, it is definitely much more of a discussion than an interview. Don't come in expecting to, like, you know, for us to have a list of questions and then for you to just you know, answer in quick, short sentences, and then we're going to move on. No, we want to get to know you more as a person. Uh, and so definitely come uh, ready to have a conversation, ready to have a back and forth uh, for this interview. And it's it's very relaxed. So like, you know, it's, ner it's normal to be nervous. So just, you know, be sure to be relaxed and just be yourself in this. So how do you prepare? Um, I think you can probably anticipate that all interviews will ask you questions about your academic interests, They'll ask you questions about your out of class experiences, extracurricular activities, other responsibilities you have. Um, interviews are probably also going to ask you about your college search process and probably about your specific interests in that institution. So you can anticipate some of the questions that might come up regarding these possible topics and then prepare some perhaps responses of how you might respond to those questions. Think carefully, do some self-reflection, think about what your academic interests are, think about what your passions are, think about what your goals are in your college experience, and come to these interview situations prepared to discuss all these interests and goals and what you hope to get out of your college experience. It's also good to spend some time researching the college where you are interviewing so that you're able to tie these interests specifically into that possible institution. Um, start with a confident handshake and eye contact. Obviously, over virtual interviews, uh, it's a little difficult to start in with a confident handshake and even in in-person interviews with COVID right now, uh, you probably won't be uh, shaking hands for these interviews, but like, you know, start out like, you know, with a confident, like, you know, whether you want to do like the, the fist bump or the elbow bump or even just a wave, which is I think what our fellows are doing right now. But eye contact is really important. Uh, and maintaining eye contact throughout the interview, I think is really important, especially over Zoom, like, you know, or over like in any kind of virtual platforms where you have, uh, so you could potentially have so many distractions, like, you know, so I think that it's really important to stay focused on the interview and to make here, maintain eye contact because we're here because we wanna learn more from you and we want, uh, we're gonna be giving you our whole attention. And so we hope that you're able to give us uh, your attention as well. And eye contact is one of the ways to let us know that you are engaged with this conversation. Sometimes prospective students are curious to know how they should dress for an interview. Um, not necessary to come in a full suit to all of your interviews, um, not a requirement to dress for success. Certainly it is noticed when students have made an effort in how they present themselves, um, but it's not required for students to dress um, so professionally that you're uncomfortable. We want you to be comfortable in these interview settings. We want you to be ready to discuss your high school experience. It's also a good idea to think about how you might present yourself in a way that truly reflects who you are. Um, so think about that as you're thinking about what to wear in the attire for these interviews. There's uh, more than one way to have a great interview. I mean, here at Hamilton, we have what's called the Hamilton Promise. There's not just one type of Hamilton student, not just one type of Hamilton experience. And that's true here, but it's also true in the admissions process. You know, two students that are coming from the same high school, they're going to have two different ways by which they come to Hamilton in their college search and how they've gotten to this point in their life. And they're also going to have two very different personalities, most likely. And so, like, you know, just because you think you are more quiet or reserved or a little bit introverted, it doesn't mean that you can't have a great interview. And similarly, just because you are a little more extroverted or a little more outgoing, um, it doesn't mean it, it might mean you're going to have a good or a great interview, but it's not always the case. Like, you know, so I think that 
like, you know, it, you don't have to be outgoing basically to have a great interview. If you come with like, as Nikki said, prepared, if you practice some, um, you know, some answers, if you just come ready to talk about yourself, you're going to be able to have a great interview and we're going to be able to get a lot more from that interview than if you don't do some of the things that we're talking about. And so there's no, uh, like, you know, there is no cookie cutter approach basically to how to have a good interview. The best way to have a great interview is just to be yourself. So an interview is your chance to tell your story, um, to highlight things about you, about your high school experience that you think the admission committee should pay attention to as we are reviewing your application. Um, think about what your academic interests are, but come prepared to talk about why these interests are important to you, why you've had certain experiences that have been really meaningful to you outside the classroom. Um, we really do want to see your application come to life. We're going to see your schedule, your academic classes on your transcript. We're gonna see the list of the things that you've done outside the classroom in your application. The interview is your chance to now explain why these things have been meaningful and important to you during your time at high school. Uh, help us help you, like, you know, so basically, like, you know, in some of the ways that uh, Nikki talked about, like for um, our interview, like, you know, some of these interview tips and having your interviews come alive, like, you know, allow us, like, you know, to be able to, like, you know, get to know you a little bit more, like, you know, come with a little bit of, um, come with, like, you know, uh, like in a little, some curiosity and like, you know, ready to learn some new things. And whether it is um, like, you know, you don't have to come with like 15 questions to do with Hamilton, but like, you know, maybe come as Nikki said, pr prepare, research a little bit more of the institution, whether it's Hamilton or somewhere else that you're applying and come ready, like, you know, to ask these questions and to engage in a conversation. We might not be able to tell you every single thing that you want to know about Hamilton, but at the very least, we'll be able to uh, fill in a lot of the gaps for you. And also, if we're not able to answer those questions, we can direct you to some of these different places, like, you know, and give you some other resource that you, resources that you might be able to, uh, to pursue. But also, like, you know, just take this opportunity to ask questions and also take this opportunity, as Nikki said, uh, to make your application come alive. We also wanted to draw your attention to this website. Um, all of these tips that Jack and I have just highlighted are actually described in greater detail on our website. So feel free to take a look at that website um, as you are thinking about preparing for your interviews. Mm -hmm. um, I'll leave this up for just a, 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 another couple of seconds in case you're all writing this website down. Um, but again, this is where you will find more information about these tips that Jack and I have just shared with you this evening. So how to prepare for an interview. Um, as we've described already, I think really it's about a lot of self-reflection. Um, this might be the first time you have ever had to think about yourself and why things are important to you and how to demonstrate those um, verbally and in writing in your application. Um, but I think really doing some self-reflection and going through that process of discovering what is important to you. What do you wish to convey to an admission committee? What should we know about you as we are reviewing your application and potential fit with Hamilton College or the college where you choose to do other college interviews? Um, so we wanted to make this a little bit personal for you and share some of our own personal experiences and share about how when we were prospective students going through our admission process, how we prepared for our interviews and what our interview experiences were like. Um, so when I was a prospective student going through my college admission process, I did spend a lot of time before I did my interviews. I actually interviewed several places, um, but I did spend some time beforehand really thinking carefully about what were the things that I thought I could contribute to a campus community? What were the ways that I wanted to get involved? And what were the things that I wanted to do academically? And how could I contribute intellectually to a classroom experience? And so in advance, I had thought about the specific examples, the specific stories from my own high school experience that I wanted to remember to be sure to highlight in my own college interviews. Um, my favorite college interview was actually the one that I had here at Hamilton when I was a prospective student. My interview was in um, the admission office. It was actually in our first admission office building on campus in a different location from where it is now. Um, and it was conducted by an admission officer. And there was a senior fellow sitting in on this interview. Um, this is part of our orientation process where we have senior fellows sit in 
on the on the interviews to learn more about how to be interviewers. And I just remember that conversation just feeling like I was myself. I felt like it was more of a conversation. It was definitely more of a back and forth. It didn't feel like a structured question and answer session where I was just responding to questions that my interviewer was posing. But I felt like it was a really easy, smooth flowing conversation. I remember laughing a lot. Um, and I just remember coming out of that interview just really excited about feeling like I had shared myself and that I really got to be myself, probably the most of all the colleges interviews that I did. It was one more experience when I was here visiting as a prospective student at Hamilton that convinced me that Hamilton was the right fit for me because of how positive my interview experience had been. Um, Jack, do you want to share your own college interview experience? Sure. I mean, uh, I only did uh, one college interview, uh, and that was at my alma mater. And um, I went into it incredibly nervous. I think I was uh, sweating the entire time, which it's totally normal. Like, you know, that's, that's to be expected. But um, I wish that I had uh, kind of prepared a little bit more like, like Nikki had. And uh, we had talked about some of the interview tips because uh, when I got in there, I saw that there was really nothing to be nervous about. It was kind of like what Nikki said. It was a very conversational approach and they wanted to know more about me. And they were able to tell me about things that my, how my interests could kind of be explored at my alma mater. And I left there kind of thinking like, whew, that was, that was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. But at the same time, I wish that I had taken more time beforehand to, to think about like, you know, some of those ways that I could have, or some of the questions that I could have asked, or some of the ways that I could have um, kind of talked a little bit more about some interest that we didn't quite get to that I, had I put a little more time in beforehand, uh, I would have uh, been able to talk a little bit more about those. Um, but like, you know, that's just, that's just like, you know, uh, you know, cautionary tale, I guess, but it still went really well. Like, you know, it was still a really positive interview experience and still got me uh, very excited about it as well. Terrific. So Anji, would you mind sharing um, sort of in hindsight, as you think back, what are some things that you wish you had known when you were a prospective student as you were preparing for your, for your own interviews? Yeah, I guess I would say like the main thing that I wish I knew is just like the importance of asking questions, like at the end of an interview, like even if you don't really have like such a concrete idea of like what question you should like you want to ask or anything I I still think it's like super important to go in like at least having like at least one good question prepared anything about like academic life at the university or college or just asking about like the social life like anything that also just indicates like your interest and also like lets people know like yes I'm interested in this college so I think sometimes like I was I would sit at the end of the interview and they'd be like okay well do you have any questions and like if I said no, they were kind of surprised that I didn't have any questions. So I would definitely say like making sure you ask at least one good question at the end of the interview can like really make a difference. That's right. Victor, would you like to share your own experience and what you wish you had known as you were preparing for your interviews? Absolutely. Um, I, I think maybe just be more relaxed. Uh, it's not a job interview, it's more of a conversational interview. Uh, I mean, I, I, Jack, I, Jack actually interviewed me when I was uh, interviewing at Hamilton. It was actually my very first inter college interview, so I was super nervous. Um, I was sweating. I was. Uh, I thought Jack was gonna going to tear me apart, but it, it wasn't the case. <laughs> uh, it was super conversational. We we ended up talking about just life stories and stuff like that. So uh, if I were to be able to know more about you know the style and how how nice people were, it'll be it'll help definitely help. Yeah. Great. How about you, Lindsay? Yeah, I have one thing that one piece of advice that I received that I'm really glad that I received and then something that I would wish that I had done more of um I think before I started interviewing and even before I started you know writing my essays and things like that I got the advice to pull out a piece of paper and write down like a couple categories you know academics extracurriculars and even just things you're passionate about and just sit down and think about what immediately comes to mind for you because I think a lot of times in interviews, it's hard because your heart is racing and you're in a room with someone that you don't know. Um, and it's easy to forget things that you're really passionate about. And so every time before an interview, I would just take a look at that piece of paper um, and remind myself of the things that I was really passionate about or that I wanted to make sure I talked about. And that was super helpful. Um, and then something that I wish that I had known was just colleges aren't looking for you to have the biggest vocabulary or to have achieved the most um, impressive things. I think colleges really are looking for you to be passionate about something and to tie it back to your own life and to really 
be able to have a conversation um, and just speak about things that you love. So I think that's, it's taking the pressure off. It really kind of helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so now we wanted to give you all who have tuned in today um, a demonstration of what an interview might look like for a student perhaps who hasn't taken some time to prepare for an interview and, and done this self-reflection process. Um, so in this scenario coming up, Angie is going to be the interviewer and Victor will be the interviewee, will be the prospective student. Um, and we're going to see what happens in this, in this situation. Okay, Victor, my question for you is, why are you interested in Hamilton? Um, um, I don't know. I mean, Hamilton is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm, could you explain that a little bit more? What exactly do you mean by it's cool? I mean, uh, the climate, climate is pretty cool and it's got a cool name. So yeah, I'm interested in Hamilton. OK, next question. <laughs> So I'd probably just go on to the next question at that point because I wouldn't know how else to like or what else to ask so that he could like explain a little bit more if he's just talking about like the name is cool so I'd probably just try to move on but I think that's a good example of like how not to answer that question. Absolutely. Can you give a, an example now of, of maybe a better response to that question? Um, so can you repeat this scenario and Anji can you pose the question again and Victor can you Take it in a more positive direction. Okay. Hello, Victor. My question for you is, why are you interested in Hamilton? Uh, I think I'm a good fit at Hamilton. When I visited you know, the campus, everyone was really welcoming and warm. Um, I was able to high five a lot of students as I took the tour. I saw uh, I will benefit from the small size classroom and the open curriculum. Um, that's why I think I will be a good fit and then I'm interested in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Terrific. <laughs> That's great. So I think that was a pretty obvious um, why scenario two was a better way to respond to that question than scenario one. But as I mentioned, um, you can probably anticipate that pretty much every interview you do will ask you why you are interested in that particular institution. So I think that's a pretty good question to anticipate and then perhaps prepare a response in advance. Um, so, Lindsay, I'm wondering, um, this has been a new experience for you as a senior fellow, um, starting out with your senior year. So, how have you found the interview format to be as you have been starting to conduct these interviews? Yeah, I think coming into this position, I thought that there was going to be certain things that you really needed to, you know, check off a list in an interview or exact questions that you had to ask every single interview. And I just don't even think there's one question that I for sure ask every interview just because every person is different. Um, and for the most part, it's truly just a conversation. Like even how we're having this panel right now, it's a conversation and it flows um, forward. I don't think anyone benefits from an interview that's super choppy and you don't really know where it's moving. Um, and it's also good for the interviewer to kind of see where we move with um, topics and kind of what you find is passionate about something that you do and something that you feel like is important to talk about. So it's really, it's kind of for us to listen to points that you want to cover. And I think that if you have something that you want to add, definitely just say it. We're, we're looking for that. And I think there aren't going to be some questions that are particularly like exactly what you want to say. So I think just kind of going with the flow and it's a very casual conversation, especially between student and you guys. Mm -hmm. Great. I think also prospective students should enter interviews knowing that these are also professional, um, that these are opportunities to demonstrate uh, maturity, insight, and your sense of professionalism. So, Victor, if you were in the shoes of our prospective students, what would you do to keep it professional? Absolutely. So, uh, first of all, actually, uh, of course, to take the interview seriously. So, don't like uh, don't think because people are nice by uh, just you know joking around and stuff like that. Uh, be professional, uh, take it seriously, and also uh, like uh, Nikki and Jack said before in the tip section, uh, dress uh, in a proper way. I mean, just dress in a way uh, that best represent your, yourself, but uh, in a comfortable way and uh, in like a more uh, proper way. I would say. Great, Jack. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, like, you know, I just think that um, one of the tips that we kind of talked about is 
um, that there's not really one truly right way to have an interview. You know, I think that um, we've talked a lot about like, you know, being yourself during an interview, like, you know, dressing comfortably and like, you know, but in a professional manner, like, you know, taking it seriously, but also like, you know, being a little bit more relaxed. But sometimes some questions that we'll get about interviews or is there something I shouldn't talk about, like, you know, in an interview or like, you know, or I, I got to ask this question once. It was like, is it okay if I talk about, you know, video games during an interview? And I was like, yeah, like, you know, talk about video games. I mean, I talk about movies all the time. I mean, come on. But like, you know, I think that, like, you know, and, and the student responder is like, well, like, you know, yeah, I love playing video games. I want to create them. I want to write them. I want to be involved in the digital technology. And I'm like, that's really cool. Like, you know, and that's part of the way we all approach these things. It's like, you know, I was not uh, the person who was most interested, like, you know, in math or science when I was growing up. But like, you know, if someone comes in talking to me about, oh, my God, my favorite class is AP Calculus, or I'm just loving my astronomy class right now, I use that as an opportunity to learn more about those things. Like, you know, and, and now I've been able to learn so much about all these different subjects that I didn't know. And so I just think that it's really just about like, you know, the content. It's about bringing yourself to the table, ready to talk about your interests. Don't be shy. Don't be uh, bashful about like, you know, bragging about yourself or talking about yourself, but just like, you know, bringing to the table, like, you know, um, those, those like, you know, experiences that you've had that you want to share with us. Um, and also like, you know, just think back on it. Like, you know, we talked about self-reflection at the beginning, like, you know, have we been able to learn from you? Like, you know, that's one of the things we're going to be thinking about. Like, you know, what have we been able to learn from you from this interview? I hope you also think about it as what have you been able to share with us and have you learned from us at the same time? And so that's what makes that it is, that's what makes it a mutually beneficial, um, mutually beneficial experience. And so, but don't worry, the conversation doesn't have to end there. Like, you know, at the end of interviews, like, you know, either right at the end for an in-person interview or afterwards, we will give you our contact information. We'll also give you the contact information for your admission officer. So these conversations, while there's a, there's a finite amount of time for in the moment, they don't end with just the interview. So I think that that's important to remember as well. Great. Um, and thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic, many colleges have had to adapt their interviews and turn these interviews from a lot of in-person on campus or off-campus interviews into virtual interviews. So Jack, can you talk a little bit about what are some of the differences in what a virtual interview experience might be compared to an in-person uh, interview experience? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things we already talked about, which is eye contact, uh, that's important in an in-person interview and in a virtual interview. So uh, make sure to like, you know, that you don't have uh, like, you know, well, like, you know, Lindsay has talked about, Nikki's talked about being prepared. Uh, I wouldn't have a script on the screen next to you, like, you know, to read off from. Definitely look at that before your interview. But like, you know, I wouldn't have like, you know, your email box open behind you or anything like that. Just like make sure that you are as focused as you can be with uh, the interview that's at hand for the next 25, 30, 40 minutes or so. Um, lighting and a mic I mean, like having a, a decent microphone and audio when you can control it is really key. Like, you know, we understand that you're not always going to have a private space where you can do these interviews. You might have family members or siblings, like, you know, walking by in the background, or you might have to do them in a public space for Wi-Fi. That's okay. We understand that. But like, you know, as much as possible, trying to uh, make sure that we can see you and we can hear you and that you can see and hear us, because sometimes it goes the other way too. Sometimes we have uh, like, you know, audio or camera issues as well. And we're going to talk a little bit about like, you know, how to troubleshoot a little bit in a minute. That's okay. We're going to understand that. Uh, sometimes what we'll do is, uh, like, you know, have uh, virtual backgrounds, like, you know, when available, like, you know, if you are, are worried about any distractions going on, but even if those distractions are going on, that's totally okay. We're, not, we're never going to hold uh, that against you in a virtual interview. Um, and I think that, like, you know, sometimes there are tech issues, and we understand that even with all the improvements that things like Zoom and other virtual meeting platforms have done during the pandemic, it's not always going to be 100% uh, uh, okay on either side of the conversation uh, every single time. And so I think that, like, you know, I think, uh, I think Nikki's going to talk to Angie in a minute about, like, you know, what to do if something goes wrong in a virtual interview in terms of technology. So Anji, if you were a prospective student, um, what would you do if your internet disconnects while you were having a virtual interview or you were having trouble with an internet connection? Yeah, so I would say the main thing, like if you know that you're gonna have trouble with the internet or you know your Wi-Fi isn't very stable, like definitely from the beginning, like let your interviewer know that that might happen and that there is, you know, it's, the chance of that happening is very high, just in case they're also aware. So if anything, they already have like a Zoom link prepared 
if they have to move to a different platform. I was also interviewing somebody and the exact same thing happened, like their internet was just not the best. So I also had to move to Zoom, but also feel free to use a chat on like the, the Slate website, which is where you, you'd most likely be doing your interview. So you can use the chat. Sometimes you can't physically see like somebody on the camera, like the camera isn't working, but the chat still works. So if anything, I would say definitely go into the chat and just let the interviewer know so they can also like switch the, the, the platform or just figure something else out. You can also move to like a phone interview if like none of the, none of the, the above works. And you know, there are definitely a lot of other options, but definitely just let the interviewer know ahead of time that that might happen. Great. Um, so we've talked about some of the challenges that might come up with virtual interviews. Jack, can you talk about some of the challenges that might come up with in-person interviews? Absolutely. So uh, sometimes, like, you know, with in-person interviews, obviously you have to come to campus for these. And sometimes uh, you might get a flat tire or you might get a little lost, like, you know, there might be detours on the road and you might be running a little late. Uh, I definitely say, like, you know, when you can try to put a little buffer in between your interviews. So if your interview is at 9.15, maybe, or at 10 o'clock, try and maybe arrive at 9.45. Like, you know, just so you can get a chance to use the restroom, use, uh, get some water. But obviously life gets in the way sometimes. You can't always... Uh, make it on time when life gets in the way. So if that happens, don't panic, don't worry. Just make sure that you, you can just call our office. We're really understanding, we're really friendly people as I hope you've seen through this Zoom. So don't worry about it. Uh, sometimes uh, there are uh, in in-person interviews, there might be long pauses in between uh, like, you know, us asking a question and you answering it. I would always say, don't be afraid of silence. Like, you know, it, it should, like, you know, we'd much rather hear that than maybe like, uh, well, I don't know, or and like, you know, just kind of rambling. If you need a moment to think of your answer, take it, like, you know, and if you didn't just like come back and you can even say like, no, oh, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I'm just going to take a moment to, to think of my answer. We're used to silence. Like, you know, we are, we're comfortable in silence. Uh, you should be as well as you're thinking of these answers. Um, sometimes like, you know, as we all, like, you know, anyone who's been to the movies in the past 15 or 20 years has heard please silence your cell phone uh, beforehand. Sometimes people forget, obviously, uh, but these things happen and sometimes people forget before interviews as well. If your phone rings or if your text thing goes off, really don't worry about it. Like, you know, try and silence them beforehand. But if that happens, you can just apologize and move on. Like, you know, we're not gonna hold it against you in the interview. If it keeps going off, you are more than welcome to pull it out of your pocket and just silence it and move on after that. Like, you know, we're not going to hold that against you in the interview process, but because you understand life, get, life happens, things happen. We're, we're human too. And so don't worry about these things as they come up. Great. Um, so now I think it would be great if we could move specifically into interview questions, some common mm -hmm. questions that are asked during an interview experience. Um, so if all five of us could share some examples of questions that we typically ask, um, I'll start. I really like to ask questions specifically about the student's high school. Um, I like to learn more about the school where students attend. I like to hear about if I were to visit that high school, what would my experience at that school be like? What would I observe? What would I see? Um, just to get a better understanding of what the student's high school environment is like. Um, that's an insightful piece of information that we're not learning about in the application through reading a transcript, but it is a way to bring the transcript to life to understand the context of the experience that students have had. Another question that I like to ask about the student's college search process is what criteria have you been using as you've been going through the college search process? I like to hear about how students have narrowed down their college list. What are they looking for in their college experience? Those are just a couple of examples of questions I like to ask. Um, but Jack, do you want to share some of your favorite questions? Sure. Uh, I like to ask the same que those questions that Nikki asked as well. I also kind of like to ask about um, students' time management skills and how they manage their time, because that is not something that anybody is perfect at. But I think it shows like, you know, it can, students can really, I think the answers are usually really honest and that's okay to be honest. And I think that it's great to see like, you know, how the students have grown and how like, you know, I think that's one of the most individual answers that you can give because no one manages their time exactly like someone else. Like, you know, like Victor and I would probably manage our time very differently. And what works for Victor might not work for me and vice versa. But what's important is that we've learned what's worked for us. And then also, I just like to ask, like, you know, if students have any favorite movies, like, you know, because not only does I think tell us a lot about them, but also it gives me some good movie recommends. I mean, I had two students in the same day tell me their favorite movie was Mary Poppins and they're from two different parts of the world. It caused me to rewatch Mary Poppins. But don't worry if you're not interested in movies. I, I'll ask about, like, you know, favorite books or favorite video games or favorite musical artists. So, like, you know, just like 
it's just some kind of fun ones for like, you know, because we talk so much about academics and the clubs and organizations you do, you also have a lot of free time too. So that's some of the things I like to talk about as well. I don't know, uh, Victor, do you have a question uh, or two that you like to ask? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, when asking about academics, I usually ask uh, students about maybe there's one project or paper they're most proud of uh, mm -hmm. that they accomplished uh, in high school. In this way, I got to know uh, what they're passionate for and uh, what they enjoy doing and uh, what they might uh, uh, succeed uh, in some, uh, in some uh, fields of study. Yeah, I could also share what I like the yeah. questions that I like to ask. So for academic stuff, I usually go for the like what class do you struggle with the most? Not mm -hmm. only does that tell me like obviously what students struggle with, but also like how they overcome that struggle, like what steps have they been taking to like get over that? Do they reach out for help? Do they not? So that also tells me like just the kind of student that they are, especially in terms of like you know, needing help, asking for help, advocating for themselves, can they do it? Or do they need a little bit like more push to that, towards that? And then outside of that, outside of like academic stuff, I just like to ask like what students do for their on their free time. Like, let's say it's like Saturday evening or something. Like I usually ask like, what are, what are you doing on a Saturday evening? Mm -hmm. Just so that I can also get a sense of like, oh, well, what do, what do students like to do outside from like academic extracurricular, like just to take care of themselves and center themselves. Yeah, thank you, Angie. Yeah, lastly, I just want to add, I, I agree with everything that's been said so far. I also recently like to ask questions about COVID, um, just mm -hmm. in kind of the way that that has shaped your life and the way that um, you've been able to find new passions during the pandemic. And um, I think a lot of time people are kind of afraid to say, oh, well, I spend a lot of time with my family. But to me, mm -hmm. that shows that you value your relationship with your family and that like, that's an awesome thing. And so I think like, that's kind of um, a question that is, you can totally be honest about, you know, well, I didn't get out of the house much, but like maybe you started banking or like maybe you started a business with your sister and like that's just as valuable as, you know, being president of a club or doing something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or like, or like having, having to work during the pandemic or having to support siblings, like, you know, I think that that goes through with all, all the different activities that we're doing, like, you know, don't, don't feel shy about like, you know, sharing these really um, important things that you were a part of and that you learned as a result of some of these tough times we've been living. I think that's a, a great example, Lindsay. Thank you. So hopefully these examples of questions have been helpful to all of you who have tuned in with us today. But we also wanted to give a demonstration um, of an <laughs> academic section of an interview and perhaps some questions that you might specifically hear when talking about your academic experience in high school. So in this demonstration, Lindsay will be the interviewer and Anji will be the interviewee or the prospective student. So Anji, now that we've headed back to campus and have been on campus for a little bit, um, tell me about what classes you're taking now that you're back on campus and any particular ones that you enjoy. Well, I will answer this question as if I were a high school student, not a college student, just for context. Um, yeah, so to answer your question, Lindsay, I take AP, AP Literature, AP History, um, AP Physics, AP Calc, BC, and I also take a creative writing class. And I, just to put it out there, like I'm really passionate about creative writing. Like I've been writing since I was five years old, short stories, poetry. I'm actually working on a novel right now. It's like science fiction inspired. And I think once like I enter college as well, like I think I also wanna focus on like creative writing, also just developing developing that skill of mine because I eventually in the future would want to write an entire novel and get it published. So yeah, just, just to give a little bit of context of like where I'm heading. Yeah, that's great. And I think in terms of academics, a lot of it is just kind of talking about things that you've been exploring and things that you might see yourself moving forward with um, or things that you, you know, I, you can say, yeah, you're not a math person, but you know, creative writing is something that I recently was passionate about. And then like, I would maybe ask, you know, have you worked with any professors about it or how how have you kind of furthered those um, academic interests maybe outside of the classroom or within the classroom? Terrific. So hopefully these questions have been helpful again to all of you who are tuning in as you're thinking about 
um, the interviews that you might have ahead of you in, in the year ahead or maybe the, the years ahead um, coming up. Um, so we're going to turn now and talk a little bit about who should interview. Um, and I think we've already covered a number of tips this today um, in this program about what makes a good interview. But um, that's what we're going to turn the conversation toward now. And so, Jack, can you talk about whether a student should choose to have an interview? Sure. So I think that, like, you know, I think it's important to note that no interview will admit a student, but a bad interview, it could uh, keep you out, like, you know, in the admissions process. Uh, like, you know, if you think that this is a good format for you, then you are welcome to have an interview. As you said, we have tons of availability for you to sign up for right now. You are welcome to do so before or after you apply, whenever you com feel comfortable doing so. Your decision about whether or not to do an interview should really depend on your personal choice and your comfort. Do you feel like this is the best way where you can share more, a little bit more information for us? Some people, yes, it is uh, in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, either in person or on a virtual platform. Some people, that's not the case and that's okay. There are a ton of other options and different um, media that you can use to connect with a, your college. Uh, so I definitely recommend if you are kind of wavering during this conversation of saying, May maybe an interview isn't quite for me. Maybe I can uh, share my interests and my passions and my personality in other ways. There are a few other ways here at Hamilton. Uh, for example, we have um, a written, so once you apply in your applications process, you'll get an email from us with access to your applicant portal. That's where you can check to make sure that we've received what we have received or not. So definitely take a look at it. But also there you can, uh, you know, further be able to share your passions and your interests with us. There is a uh, supplemental question, which is a written supplement. It basically asks, why are you interested in Hamilton? It's 250 words or less, so it's nothing for you to stress out about. It's just there if you want to talk a little bit more about your interest in Hamilton. If you'd rather submit a personal URL or video, or also do that, like, you know, that's an option for you to do there. You can talk about your day in the life. You can talk about your interest in Hamilton to the camera. You can show us a, a skill that you have or an interest that you have. There's also something called the Hamilton Hello, which is a video response. You have a certain amount of time to uh, think about the question that you've been asked and then record your answer to us. And uh, we get some really great on the fly answers there. Like, you know, don't think too seriously about it. Just like, you know, talk a little bit about whatever your response is directly to that. And so those are some other options that you can ex explore. But like, you know, we, this whole process, like, you know, this whole, um, you know, webinar is about uh, an interview. And many of you might end up choosing to do interviews, which is great. We would love to talk to you more. But some of you might decide that that's not quite for you. That's okay. Like, you know, these, there are these other ways that you can explore um, to share your interests and your passions with us. I think we've described today several ways of how students can have successful interviews. There really is no formula for a successful interview. Um, but Jack, I'm wondering if you can talk about whether there are some things that students should think about avoiding to do in an interview. Sure. Yeah. Um, I definitely say, like, you know, as we mentioned a few times, uh, you don't have to do a huge amount of research into the college or university with whom you're interviewing, but I would make a point not to show express disinterest in the college. Like, you know, I would avoid saying something like, oh, my mom made me do this. That's not quite what we're looking for there. Even if it's true, I would probably not share that. Um, like, you know, also like, you know, while we don't have to do a ton of interest, it's probably a good thing to do, or a ton of, not a ton of interest, a ton of research, it's a, it's a good thing to do at least some re research. Like, you know, if you're saying in a Hamilton interview, oh, I'm looking for an urban environment. Hamilton is a more rural environment. So that shows you haven't gone too much into the research, maybe even just barely on the surface level. Um, or like, you know, talking about how I'd like to attend a graduate school program at Hamilton. We don't have graduate school uh, here. We only have an undergraduate uh, education. So some things like that, I think would, um, just do a little bit more research. Uh, I would also, I, I think like, you know, all of our fellows have mentioned this, but uh, take the interview seriously uh, in, in a professional manner. Like, you know, it is gonna be a relaxed conversation. We want you to be relaxed. We want you to be yourself, uh, but like, make sure not to be too comfortable. Like, you know, I would probably definitely refrain from using inappropriate language, like swear words. Uh, like, you know, remember your audience. Like, you know, don't ask like you know, inappropriate way too personal of questions. You can, you are certainly welcome to ask us about like, you know, like you know, how we came to Hamilton or what our favorite things are about Hamilton or things along those lines. But like, you know, I would avoid asking 
too specific or too personal of questions uh, as part of this process. So just remember your audience, remember that this is at a professional setting and just um, make sure you come with a few questions, but uh, make sure to think carefully about what those questions are. Great. So just a recap of some ideas that we have, um, some tips that we have of having successful interviews um, would be coming to the interview process, ready to be open about your interests, about your high school experience, about your goals, about your college experience, about your college interests and your goals for the future. Um, we really want to get to know you. And so tell your story, be yourself, let us get to know you. Um, answer questions in an interview with really thorough responses, offer a lot of personal insight through your responses, carry the conversation well. Um, if you have a question about something that comes up as a topic in one of those questions, feel free to jump in and ask that question right then. Um, but toward the end of the interview, your interviewer will probably give you the opportunity to ask questions where you then have the chance to learn more about that college where you are interviewing. So prepare a couple of questions ahead of time of information that you truly like to learn as you are determining whether this college might be a good fit for you. And then ask for your interviewer contact information at the conclusion of the interview and send a follow up note. This is another opportunity for you to reiterate your interest in that college to say that you appreciated the interviewer's time and that you learned a lot more about that college and that you continue to be excited about the possibility of attending that college. Um, so those are just that's just a recap of some of the things that we've talked about today. We want to save a little bit of time. Unfortunately, we're running short on time, uh, but we want to just save a little bit of time for some questions. I I know our colleague JD Ross has been fielding some questions in the chat and the Q and the Q and A, um, but it also looks like we've received a few questions that have come in um, that may not have been answered yet. One question is: What should prospective students do if they are confronted with a question that they haven't prepared in advance? Jack, would you like to take this one? Sure. Uh, don't panic. Like you know, uh, you might get asked questions that uh, might stump you a little bit. I mean. We're not here to stump you like you know we're not trying to be like oh, i gotcha but um like you know sometimes some of these questions might take a little bit more thought and so i think the example i gave earlier is just like you know just take a breath uh, i would avoid doing the ums uh you know i don't know like, you know just take a breath and you can always just tell us like you know i am um i just need i just want to take a minute to think about that answer it's a really good great question you can take it you can take that time and then just be ready to to come back uh with a with a substantial answer as uh, as nikki said so my main piece of advice is don't panic. Uh, it looks like another question we received is because Hamilton takes into account demonstrated interests, does Hamilton weigh in-person interviews higher than virtual interviews? Um, the answer to this is no. Um, as we've already described today, um, interviews are just one way to express interest in the college. If you're not able to have an interview, they are not required, and there are other ways through the application process for students to demonstrate an interest. If students do choose to have an interview, however, in-person interviews or virtual interviews would be considered equal in our process. Same is true with who your interviewer is, whether it's one of our senior fellows like Lindsay, Angie, or Victor, or with it, or if it's with an admission officer, with myself or Jack or any of our other colleagues in the admission office. All interviews truly are considered equally here at Hamilton for students who choose to have an interview be a part of their process. Um, another question that we received is, should we prepare materials connected to extracurriculars for an interview? You are welcome to do so. Um, you do not have to. Sometimes students bring with them their resumes or will send us their resumes afterwards, uh, but you don't have to. I, I will tell you, whenever I am handed a resume during an interview, I usually put it off to the side and I'll absolutely add it to your application afterwards, but I'm there to talk to you. Like, you know, I want to talk to you about uh, your extracurriculars, your academic interests. So you are welcome to do, you're welcome to give us a resume if you'd like to, but it is by no means a requirement of the interview. Um, and it looks like the last question we've received um, is if you are interviewing before submitting your application, how do the interviewers see your transcript and extracurriculars? Um, so as Jack just just described, um, we certainly are interested in knowing what your transcription extracurricular activities will reveal, 
but it's actually more important for us to have a conversation during the interview setting about your academic experience and about your activities. So we actually don't need to see this information in advance of the interview because all of these experiences are likely going to come up during that conversation. So we will see all that information when we review your application along with um, the interview. So no need for us to have that information in advance of the interview conversation. Um, unfortunately, we really are running short, so we're going to need to bring this to a close, um, but hopefully you all found this really helpful today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, please stay safe. Please stay healthy during this year ahead. Um, please feel free to visit hamilton.edu slash discover as we will be continuing to post more recordings and also other virtual opportunities to connect with us and to learn more about Hamilton. Thank you again for uh, joining us today. We hope this was helpful. Good luck to all of you as you're moving forward with your college search process. And if you have any questions specifically about Hamilton as you're moving forward with your college search, feel free to be in touch with us. But thanks again. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Bye. Thank you.